Hello and welcome back to my weekly review of The Mandalorian Season 3. This week's episode is called Chapter 21, The Pirate, and is directed by Peter Ramsey and written by Jon Favreau. It's got a runtime of 41 minutes and tells the story of an attack on Navarro. It opens up with Grief Karga making plans to expand his city when a pirate ship appears in the skies above them. He's hailed by Gorion Shard, the Pirate King, and Shard demands that Karga surrender the city to him. Karga refuses and Shard begins a bombardment. Grief sends out an SOS before heading off to lead the townspeople to safety. From there, the story switches over to Captain Carson Teva. He listens to Karga's SOS and has a brief chat with Gerizeb Aurelios in his first live-action appearance. Teva rushes off to Coruscant to request aid from the New Republic, but ends up meeting with an unhelpful bureaucrat. The two discuss a possible intervention before Elia Kane barges in and inserts herself into the conversation. The talk goes nowhere and Teva leaves without aid. Teva arrives at the home of Din and the clan and lets Din know that Karga is in trouble. We swap over to Din's perspective and watch him try to convince the clan to help by telling them about Grief's offer for land, but they seem skeptical until Paz Vizsla steps in and vouches for Din. They make a plan and then attack the pirates on Navarro. Din engages in a space battle with the pirates' ships, and Bo drops off Rook Cast and Paz Vizsla leading two groups of Mandalorian warriors. They engage in a battle with the pirates throughout the town and quickly eliminate all of their ground forces. Up above, the pirate king suffers heavy losses while his ship is torn apart. Instead of leaving, he opts to make one last run at the townspeople, and together Bo and Din destroy the last of his engines and send the ship crashing down into the planet's surface. Afterward, Grief welcomes the Mandalorians to the planet and thanks them for their help. He grants a huge tract of land to them and any future Mandalorians that want to settle on the planet. The show swaps perspective to Bo-Katan, and we see her called to meet with Rook Cast. Cast tells her to take off her helmet and then confirms that she believes Bo-Katan has come to lead them. She takes Bo outside and explains that she will be going off to find more Mandalorians to join the fold, and that they plan to retake Mandalore. We swap back to Captain Teva, who is investigating a destroyed transport ship. He uses a droid probe to scan the inside of the ship and discovers it was the ship moving Moff Gideon. The crew is all dead, but there are no signs of the intruders or Moff Gideon's corpse. Okay, so, there's a lot of exciting plot movement going on in this episode, and one thing that isn't all that well set up, but could work given more context. We return to the pirates and their beef with Karga, and we saw Din take up the offer from episode 1 of the season. We also tied in the spy storyline with the main line, though not very well. They're still loosely connected at best. Story-wise, everything is consistent and there are no major holes in the story. The only thing that comes close is near the end where Bo takes off her helmet at Rook Cast's request. Cast has been extremely strict with the whole creed and her changing her mind is a big turnaround. The show doesn't give much of an explanation for it, but if you piece together all of the tidbits, it kind of makes sense. Cast is realizing that a new phase of the Mandalorian people's history is beginning and she hopes that Bo is the one to bring about that change. Bo traditionally didn't wear a helmet and she was able to move about the universe with ease. Her goal in sending Bo around without the helmet is that Bo will lead the Mandalorian she finds through the living waters to be redeemed and return helmeted. That, or finding out about the Mythosaur, broke her brain and I'm just huffing copium. This episode has lots of excitement in the form of battle between the Mandalorians and the pirates. And boy is it a fun one. As Vizsla and Rook Cast both get a chance to shine in battle and the Mandalorians in general look like professionals against the pirates. The majority of the screen time for this episode is split between the Mandalorians as a group and Paul Sun Hyung Lee as Captain Carson Teva. There are a couple of decent speeches, but nothing too amazing. The Mandalorians don't do a whole lot of talking. Emily Swallow as Rook Cast gives another small lecture to Sackoff, and she does it well. She imparts how serious Cast is and her convictions, and yet seems a little shaken by the turn of events. Katie Sackoff got to take off her helmet for a bit, but most of her lines were leading the Mandalorians in battle. In the end, she's mostly just bewildered by Cast's request. Tate Fletcher as Paz Vizsla gives a pretty good speech to convince the clan to help, and was pretty pumped when he showed up with his big old minigun laser. Paul Sun Hyung Lee does most of the emotional lifting for the episode. We see him receive the SOS and go on a personal mission to Coruscant to try and get help. He seems annoyed by the bureaucracy, and he makes it obvious how much he hates former Imperials when he's talking to Kane. The dude had no chill. He was like a space cop in this episode on a little investigation, and he was just too old for this shit. The one performance everyone's going to be talking about, though, is a minute or less appearance of a beloved character from Rebels. Zeb Aurelius makes his first live-action appearance played by Steve Bloom. The costume looks amazing, and I'm so glad that we're getting more alien characters in the universe. Visually, the episode features a giant space battle, a street war-type battle between the Mandalorians and the pirates, and a little adventure that Teva goes on visiting different locations across the universe. The battle sequence is really well done. I've been a big fan of the ship-to-ship -ship action we've gotten this season, and this episode was no different. Mando pulls off some sick maneuvers, and their strategy was actually pretty good. It would have been cooler if the pirates had put up a little bit more of a fight, but I think the show might be building to a big space battle in the end. 
like one of Gideon's troops versus Din in the Zen 1. The ground battle was also decent with the Mandos facing a lot more resistance than they did in the air and both Paz Vizsla and Rook Cast getting big entrances. Vizsla gunning everyone down was brutal, and then they outdid themselves by having Cast take out the tower. It was exciting, got the story across, and there were some big moments. Soundwise, the episode follows the Disney formula with solid orchestral backing for most of the episode that follows the scenery like a dog with a bone and pulls out as much emotion as it can get. Standout moments for me were at the Rebel Bar, during the attack on the city, and as Din enters the fray against the pirates. The Rebel Bar has this awesome slow guitar western sounding song that plays. It reminded me so much of Rainer's Bar from StarCraft. The attack on the city is scored with this intense, fast-paced sound that emphasizes the destruction and chaos on screen. It fits perfectly behind all of the shots of the civilians screaming and running away as their city explodes. When Din shows up and destroys a couple of Gorian Shard's fighters, we're listening to his theme song playing. I love his theme personally, and always found the western vibes with the New Age sound to be a perfect representation of the Star Wars universe. Old school western with New Age technology and ideas. Overall, the episode was filled with excitement. It moved the plot along quite a bit, we got some cool moments from side characters, and we got a live action appearance of Zeb from Rebels. It was a pretty good episode. I don't really think it tried anything all that new, but it's definitely well done. As for what I expect going forward, I honestly don't know. They seem to be setting Bo up to lead the Mandalorians, but Din's the only one actually following the Creed now. Bo just took her helmet off again. It also wasn't her that led them to a new home. It was Din. So maybe they're setting her up as a false prophet type of character. Who knows? Moff Gideon is for sure alive, and at this point probably back up to his old shenanigans. 8 out of 10. That's it for me, thanks for watching, and remember, these are just my thoughts. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. So you're thinking you're a wise guy, huh? Well, we'll see about that next time, yeah, she.